Hey everybody, welcome to the Morning Devo with Bowo. Friday the 8th, a couple days after my anniversary. Awesome. Hey, we're going to be in Psalm 20 through 21 today. So we're going to get through two Psalms. And I put on this music, it was called trap music. I've heard that term before. But uh, it's a little jumpy, a little bumpy, right? A little kind of, you know, got that little back and forth thing going. And um, this kind of music uh, obviously is stemmed from kind of the uh, hip hop uh, world. And, uh, and so there it is, trap music, T-R-A-P, that's what it said. So uh, anyway, it's kind of interesting and definitely a, 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 a pump up, that's for sure. Like I said, I wish I had a trampoline. <laughs> anyway, my name is Bo Willette. I'm one of the pastors there at Calvary Christian Fellowship with Senior Pastor Scott Richards. Hope you guys are doing well. And uh, I do these devos Monday through Friday, just about every time, right? Usually around nine-ish, but uh, today I'm running a little late. And the reason is, is because as I was riding my motorcycle this morning, um, so I saw a motorcyclist come around uh, a corner and um, and he kind of gave me the, uh, you know, hey, a motorcyclist usually say hi. And um, he kind of did that. And went, and then I didn't think much of it. The light turned green and I went. But there was a car as I was passing uh, other cars on the other side. They were kind of waving like their hands at me um, to get my attention. So I looked in my rear view, rear view mirror and I saw that the, the person had hit the median and fell over. And so I turned around, went over, put my emergencies on, and lo and behold, it was this young guy. Um, God, he looked like he's 16, 17 years old. No, no uh, uh, gear at all on his motorcycle, no gloves, no, uh, he had a helmet, but uh, no, no pants really for riding or shoes for riding or jacket for riding. And... Um, and uh, he just lost control, and, and uh, you could tell he's a new rider. Uh, just uh, and um, anyway, but it was I was able to help him get his bike off, uh, or uh, you know, in an area that was safe. I checked his bike out, and um, he unfortunately couldn't get his bike out of really first gear um, and neutral. So I just ended up putting on my hazards and fall, and and I made sure he was okay, and I got him to where he needed to go. Um, just in that one gear, you know, and I just rode behind him with my emergencies on to make sure that he, uh, that cars knew that, hey, there was a guy who, uh, you know, we ain't going to be going too fast here. But uh, yeah, so just uh, pray for this young man. Um, I, uh, uh, you know, he got my number, so I'm hoping he connects with me and we can get him, you know, maybe to church. And uh, that would be awesome. What a w weird connection that would be, right? But um, anyway, you just never know. So, uh, um, you know, you just uh, got to be ready all the time, right? And uh, so anyway, Psalm 20, 21. So that's why I was a little late today. Um, so it's not always, you know, bows out in somewhere in the forest. You know, it's sometimes I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> but anyway, Psalm 20, I say that jokingly. So Casey says, yes, thank you. God that the young man did not get serious, seriously injured. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Um, wow. He did have some good scrapes on him, but uh, yeah, Paula says uh, uh, that, that is scary. Absolutely. You know, no fun. I hope he gets some uh, gear and I hope he connects with me and we could, um, you know, touch base. So divine appointments. Amen. So Psalm 20 says, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. Woo. I wonder if the Lord answered this young man when he was in distress and <laughs> sent him someone, <laughs> right? Some people to help him. May the name of God, uh, the God of Jacob, protect you. So here we see something really cool in Psalm 20, and that is um, we see this term now being used, the God of Jacob. Uh, and that's kind of a neat term. We haven't seen that a ton in the Bible, but we, we do are reminded of Jacob and all of his sons. And of course, this brings us back to the idea of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so, uh, you know, David here remembers that, that God had many promises to the 12 tribes. 
And there were specific prophecies given to each son of Jacob. And so David's reminded of that. And it's good for us to remember, you know, God's call in our life and God's, uh, you know, ways that he's touched us before in the past. Those are things and great things to lean on um, in your life. Laura says, God puts us in the right time and place for those in need physically and spiritually. Amen. And so remembering God, remembering his past work, remembering that because it shows that he's going to be faithful in the future as well. May he send you help from the sanctuary. Hmm, that's so cool. Again, maybe God sent some help from the sanctuary to this young man, right, to help him out. And grant us support from Zion. So may God support us, right? That idea of support, you know, what supports a table? Well, it's the legs, right, that uh, become the foundation of that table. And so God is that foundation, uh, is that thing that we can rest on, his word, right? And the church, actually, the purpose of the church is to uphold the, the word of God. That's the purpose of the church. Um, it's to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, Ephesians chapter 4. It's to uphold, to be a pillar of the truth, right? In the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy talks about that, chapter 2. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, may we get support. How do we get support from the Word? May He remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. Remember that idea of burnt offering? David is bringing himself before God. May He give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. What a cool thing. Hey, may the Lord give us success. May he give us the desire of our heart. You know, hopefully the desire of our heart is something good. It's something that's, you know, in God, right? It's not some kind of carnal thing. Oh, what's the desire of my heart? I know, a pink Cadillac, something like that, you know. But actually, the, you know, God is not going to just give us our desires if we're just going to go and feed our flesh with it. That doesn't sound like God. But sometimes we think that way, especially when we're young. We kind of tend to think that way. It says, may he give you the desire of your heart. Verse 5, we will shout for joy when we are victorious and will lift up our banners in the name of our God. The idea is the flag. The idea is waving the flag, you know, kind of this patriotism. Uh, is that the word? Patriotism? Um, yeah, I think so. But uh, that idea of, you know, uh, you know, being, in a sense, excited about God as a community and lifting up our flag unto the Lord, you know, um, he is our king um, and we are a part of his kingdom. So that's kind of cool. Maybe shout for joy, right? The victory sounds very Jericho-like. So it seems like David is kind of reminiscing on Jacob and Jericho and things that he knows about the word of God. And that's kind of neat. And the song is kind of going in that way. It says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers from his, whole, from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Again, that right hand comes in to play. God's right hand. This is something that will be a theme throughout the Bible. Uh, God's right hand. Uh, hand of power. And uh, it becomes a very interesting phrase. Um, especially for your Bible study. You might want to study that word, that phrase, the right hand, and see where that leads you. So, but it says, God saves his anointed. Mm, that's cool, right? His anointed, his Mashiach, his Messiah. God's going to save his Messiah. God's going to be with his Messiah. God's going to take care of his Messiah. It's going to look like maybe he's going to be forsaken, but he's going to be saved, very interesting, right? Sounds like Jesus, right? David uh, uh, kind of foreshadows the life of Christ in these Psalms. It says, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of our God. Very famous worship song, that's for sure. I'm sure you all know that. Um, but yeah, some will trust in cars, some will trust in houses, 
Some will trust in their motorcycles. Some will trust in their whatever, but we will trust in the name of our God. Some will trust in their weapons. Some will trust in their military. Oh, I trust in our country because we have a strong military. Some will trust in horses. Some will trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Some will trust in, hey, the ability to have a nuclear weapon. Some will trust in, hey, you know, that kind of arms race, right, that the countries have all the time. Hey, are we out of the, the arms race, people say? Oh, yeah, totally. Really? We really are? Mm, I don't think so, right? Still, countries are just trying to get right more weapons and more weapons and as some countries kind of uh, uh, kind of put down some of their nuclear weapons other countries are trying to get nuclear weapons it's unbelievable right it just keeps going on and on and that's how it rolls and so some will trust in chariots some will trust in horses but we will trust in the name of our god they are brought to their knees and fall but we will rise up and stand firm O lord save the king answer us when we call very cool answer us when we call i love that they are brought to their knees and fall but we will rise up and stand firm <laughs> yeah everybody in the earth uh, on the earth is gonna die and there's going to be people that will, it says, be raised from the dead. And uh, at some point, everybody will be raised from the dead. But there will be those that truly can stand. And then there's going to be others that just aren't going to be able to stand, right? You know, it's interesting, though. Even the term stand is an interesting one throughout the Bible. And you can even do a Bible study just on that word stand, you know. And I love that section in the New Testament where it says God is able to make you stand. Woo, right? He's able to make us stand. Oh, gosh, that's awesome. Because let's face it, you know, who can stand before God, the Bible says. Again, that word stand. And the answer is nobody, right? We all will collapse before the deity. And... Um, to be able to stand before the deity would be a mighty thing indeed and you'd have to be a mighty person but it seems like because of what jesus has done not seems but it's because of what jesus has done the scriptures tell us that we've been given a new status with god you know instead of a status of unrighteousness we've been given a declaration of righteousness through the atoning work the sacrifice the blood that was shed the righteousness of Christ uh, being given to us. Man, that's radical. We are part of his family. We've been now engrafted into his family. So we have this right standing with God. Very cool. So Psalm 21 says, O Lord, uh, the king rejoices in your strength. How great is his joy in the victories you give. You have granted him the desire of his heart and have not withheld his request of his lips. You welcome him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him. Length of days for ever and ever. Wow, the king has asked for an everlasting life. And it says, through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You have bestowed on him splendor and majesty. Surely you have granted him eternal blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord through, through the unfailing love of the Most High. He will not be shaken. Very cool because you get the heart for David. And that heart is, is for everlasting life. You know, is my heart really for everlasting life? Am I really set on that? Am I really excited about that? Um, David just couldn't wait to be in the presence of God. And couldn't just, he just was excited, kind of bubbled up over it. Like, man, I'm going to be in the presence of God. How cool is that? What's that going to be like? Oh, man. And his mind just, could, God, you have granted me everlasting life. What confidence, right, that David exudes here. You have granted me, you know, life forever. Oh, man. David understood the promises of God, that God was offering life eternal, abundant life, that full life what kind of life? Everlasting life. So when we see the word abundant life, a lot of times we think of here and now, nice house, big car, big this, big that, where instead of maybe thinking about everlasting life, right, that sounds a little better than temporary life, right? Our lives are temporary here, but God's offering 
everlasting. So where is in my heart when it comes to everlasting life? Am I really riveted on that? Surely you've granted us this eternal life, he says in 6. And then in 7 he says, For the king trusts in the Lord through, through his unfailing love. We read that. He will not be shaken, it says. It says, Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. Again, the right hand, the strong hand of God, this anointed hand of God, so to speak, that will destroy the enemy. So very cool. At the time of your appearing, you will make them like a fiery furnace. Hmm. In his wrath, the Lord will swallow them up. Wow. King David understood that the Lord is going to what? Appear. There will be what we call the great and glorious appearing of our God and Savior. There's going to be a coming back of our Lord, this appearing of God. So it's a, it, it, you see a, a subject um, that is being expressed by David that seems to be reiterated, or doesn't seem to be, I use that phrase a lot, but it is reiterated over and over in the Bible. And that is this idea of the appearing of God. We saw that in the one of the oldest books of the Bible, the book of Job, a thousand years before David, that Job knew he would see God on the planet, on the earth. Really radical. And so we see that this appearing is something that is expected. It's a hope. Why? Because the, the intimacy with God has been lost through sin. And so the Bible is always now, it, it, from the very beginning, from that lost position in the Garden of uh, Eden, and, and now you see a constant thread of wanting to see the appearance of God, this future hope, right? This future grace of the appearance of God. And it says his fire is going to consume the enemies. Hmm, sounds like some judgment, right? Sounds pretty Revelation-like. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, the posterity from man, their posterity from mankind, though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes. They cannot succeed, for you will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your might. Wow. Sounds like God's going to one day deal with everything. And this is something that's a continual theme as well. The judgment, the accountability we have with God. And just as so many have gone against the 12 tribes, Jacob, and so we see there's many things that go against us, even as those that follow Yeshua, Jesus, right? The Mashiach, the Messiah, right? The anointed one of God. Um, and those of us that follow Jesus, though we are told to love our enemies and do good to those who even use us, people still can hate us, right? Hate that we trust in the rabbi from Nazareth. And it says they plot evil against God. They devise schemes, wicked schemes against God. But it says they cannot succeed. And that's what I want to focus on at the end of the devotion. Do I really believe that they're not going to succeed? Or do I think they're going to succeed? One thing we read about uh, in the latter parts of our, our Bible is a one world government, a one world economic system, a power that is so strong that if you don't obey it, you will be in a sense, put or not in a sense, but put to death, right? And uh, it seems like it's winning, but it's not winning. And and King David knows that anything up against God is going to be annihilated. And that's something that we can just have a sure foundation on too, like King David, a real trust. You can see that King David really had his, in a sense, theology, uh, his systematic theology. He really had a a structure to it. He understood um, um, what that theology was, and he could express it very well. He understood that God was coming back again. He understood God was going to come back and judge. He understand that there was a right hand of God. There was an extension of God that was going to come out, right, and touch those on the earth. This extension of God 
right? Your hand is an extension of you, all right? And it's like he knew that there was going to be this anointed one, this right hand, this extension of God. I mean, very cool. And uh, and so, man, hey, this is what we want to do. We want to have people, we want to be people like King David that really are understanding good theology. Um, I always recommend getting a systematic theology book and uh, and just going through it. And you could study angels. You could study, you know, the church. You could study nature of God. You could stu- study the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Father, um, the second coming, you know, all kinds of things. But it's a great book just to look things up, a systematic theology book. So anyway, it's a great couple chapters, really, of God just giving David uh uh, everything he wants. And what does David really want? I mean, this is what we see in the psalm. What does he really want? What's the desire of David's heart? It's to be in the presence of God. Wow. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you what? The desire of your heart. And what is the desire of King David's heart? To be in the presence of the Lord. Wow. Very cool. So a very cool psalm. I, I really love it. And it gives us a lot of hope to know that they will not succeed. And that's good to know. You know, it might seem like it, but it they don't. And and so hey, that's pretty cool to think about. So you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you later. And uh have a good weekend. Bye bye.